he gained a ton of weight and he just couldn't <laughs> swing anymore. The webs couldn't support him. So he just he's a lonely pizza man in New York. Hello, welcome to the Bush League Gaming Podcast, your source for ordinary opinions from ordinary gamers. Today, we are reviewing Miles Morales, Spider-Man Miles Morales. I'm your host, Jacob Bush, and with me today, he would get into a stranger's van if they offered him candy. Your favorite Crip boy, Nick Beard. <laughs> if it was... It's it's Nick's childlike wonder. Yeah. 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 He just was... can't help but to be curious. Do you if remember writing a... that one? That's like my favorite thing, like when a parent has a bad kid, they're like, he's just curious. <laughs> he just, just has a wonder justification. He just likes kid. Butterfinger. Yeah. It's like, no, he's a terror. Do you remember writing that one, Ryan? That was like, like five or long six ago. ago. Long yeah. ago. Yeah. yeah. It was, was vaguely familiar. Yeah. Anyways, his mom has a sleep time timer on his Xbox. Leader Nintendo. <laughs> <Ryan's laughs> <Ryan's Gelf. laughs> nice. She should. She should. It would be responsible of her to have done that growing up. Um, <laughs> but she left me to my own devices, and we can see how that turned out. That was a Carlton original. Nice. That was good. Carlton just sent some really good ones. Yeah. Anyways, today we're here to review mm. Spider-Man Miles and Morales, released in 2020 uh, on PS4, PS5 on November 12th. Developed by Insomniac Games, published by Sony Interactive Entertainment, and currently priced at $50.00. But it goes on sale frequently because it's at that point in its life cycle. You can get it, I think, like 30 bucks right now. Which, again, it's a smaller game. It's not a full-fledged title. They don't lead with that. So that's why it's at $50, not $70 in the PS5. Is that familiar? Does that sound, sound right was to it you? Was it $50? You paid, I think, $80 or $70 because you got the 2018 version with the game, if you recall. You could buy a bundle including Spider-Man 2018 and Miles Morales. That's it. For That's like seventy or eighty dollars, you're like right. That. Yeah, I totally. Agree but again, if that. you just want Miles Morales, it's fifty bucks on the PS5. It's a spinoff game of the Spider-Man 2018 game. Uh, again, made by Insomniac Games, very similar. Both genres are action and adventure with those. And uh, yeah, it's it's a it's like a revamp. It's like an improvement. It's a spinoff of that game which we reviewed last year. And let's just start it off, Ryan. What would you think of Miles Morales? I thought it was awesome. I personally, this is one of my favorite like iterations of spider-man in all media Mm. i think miles morales is a really good spider-man um i think he has some of the best character and innocence Mm. of all of the characters besides um the 2018 spider-man he's pretty similar they're both very like i guess naive and young and just inexperienced which i think is great um way better than toby mcguire don't talk. Don't talk. Don't talk. <laughs> Jacob's a boy. huge Tobey Maguire fan. Oh boy, I love him. Uh, but no, I think Miles Morales is a really good character. Really good uh, backstory. Did you see End of the Spider Verse by chance? Yeah. Oh, we course. saw it together in theaters yes, actually. Together, me and you did. Yeah. Um, that was my first cartoon? exposure. The cartoon. Yeah. 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 By, made by Sony. That was my first exposure really to Miles Morales. So I compare everything to that now. Same for you, both yeah. of you. Yeah. Never read the comics. Nothing like that. No. Never. And I think this is a good branching of that character to me too, because I think mm-hmm. you know one is the real introduction. He's a child, like really much a, a, a young kid, and then here he's still young, but he is figuring it. Out. I think it's like, though there are different universes, different stories. It's an extension of that movie to me. Yeah, yeah. where you're seeing a little bit further down the career. Yeah, hundred percent. Because I didn't know anything about Miles Morales, and you get introduced to both his mom, his dad, and his uncle, mm-hmm. and the game is real similar in all those aspects. Because um, I just wouldn't have known. So you two also enjoyed this game from that perspective? Big time. Uh, definitely from that perspective, agreeing with Miles. I really like him. And also just in regards to it being an iteration of the third one, mm-hmm. which was that our first PlayStation 5 game? What game did we play first? God of War, God of War. and then Spider-Man. Remember, I won that vote. You did yeah, on right. Twitter. Twitter yes. decided for us. So for me, that was really exciting because it took me right back to the PS5 launch is how I felt. It- it did, and I was we we waited to play. We've all owned this game for since it came out nine months now, yeah. ten yeah. months now, mm-hmm. and we've held off on playing it because I think playing the first 2018 version too close to this hampers your experience because it's like oh, it's yeah. just like DLC or it's a little it's too much right now. Yeah. So I think we waited. Like I was Pretty actually good. craving playing this more by the end of it. Yeah, I agree. Which our timing worked out well there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I want to read a description of the story from their website just to give you a baseline of what it's like. 
In the latest adventure in the Marvel Spider-Man universe, teenager Miles Morales is adjusting to his new home while following in the footsteps of his mentor, Peter Parker, as a new Spider-Man. But when a fierce power struggle threatens to destroy his new home, the aspiring hero, hero realizes that with great power, there must also come great responsibility. To save all of Marvel's New York, Miles must take up the mantle of Spider-Man and own it. That's the description of the story. Summarizes it pretty well. Power struggle is a big point there that I think is kind of the through line of the story. And I'm curious, Nick, let's start with you. What do you think of this story? And also com- I, this entire review, I think we're going to compare it to the 2018 game as well, because they're so closely knit, same engine, same universe. But what do you think of this story specifically? I liked it a lot. I, ooh, I mean, I'll have to come back on this, see if I retract some of my words. But I think thinking about Roxxon, thinking about... Uh, Kegler, what's it? What's it? There? I don't actually remember. You're, you're Real? Real, the, Real the bad guy, the Roxon, Roxon guy. Are you talking about the Roxon guy? Yeah, yeah. It's like Kegler or something like that. I don't that. remember. I his thought name. his name was Roxon. <laughs> Mister, Mister, Mister Roxon, Mister Roxon. I think call, that, we'll call him Mister Roxon. Uh, I think that Roxon Morales mixed with uh, mixed with <laughs> Finn. <was> dad. <laughs> now I'm gonna. Now I'm just gonna until I figure that out. So I think that mixed with Finn, uh, and then reintroducing Kegel. mr kegel was his name kegel yeah kegel kegels kankle kankle uh i think it was really good uh to be honest i was not i don't know what i was expecting but the story was really good i think at one point i was even kind of like kind of emotional about something yeah. so uh afton came in holding a tray and i had had the controller like this with the headset on and i look up at her and she's just like i'll come back and just turned around and walked away. You kind of well yeah, tears well in your eyes, well, so. which I, I do. We're going to do a spoiler section for this episode, so let's start story broadly right now. Yeah, we'll go into gameplay mechanics, some of the music, and then we'll go into a story spoiler because I think this game's worth kind of talking about the spoilers in it. Yeah, mm-hmm. but it was great. Ryan, to you, story. What'd you think? Uh, it was good. I think they got away from the traditional Spider-Man villains a lot mm-hmm. that we saw in Spider-Man 2018. That was super villain heavy, right? So yeah. like the final battles, like six four different main villains six sinister six triple, it triple six? x the sinister it's lit in marvel comics the sinister six is a big thing so it, it, six but i'm i can't i can only picture four in vulture it. octopus uh electro rhino rhino scorpion scorpion and uh, mr i don't know white balance what was it <laughs> <laughs> mr negative <laughs> mr negative uh, he yeah, wasn't part of the six though i think there wasn't there was another mr one. sepia nonetheless yeah. nonetheless this story was separated from traditional yeah which i always thought i would like that like tons of these super or these spider super villains in one game um but this was kind of refreshing it showed that they could write a really good story without really hanging on some of those old names um because a lot of those have been fleshed out we know everything we need to know about Scorpion Rhino. You know, it, those have all been explored. And so, um, although Rhino is in this game again, kind of this new threat, it wasn't all that creative. Roxxon, you know, this Corpor- Simon this Krieger. corporation. Krieger. Si- Simon Krieger. Krieger. Yeah. yeah. Simon Krieger. This corporation that is like on face value is like doing all this good energy work for the world, but really is run by this like megalomaniac. Mm-hmm. I it's not that creative. No. I didn't think that that aspect of the story was all that amazing, but um, it was unique. This, this dynamic between miles, not only miles and his family, but miles and his best friend, mm-hmm. um, which I thought was really well fleshed out, really well written, which yeah, let's save that aspect for the spoiler section. Cause I think diving into that is elevates the story yeah. because you do have, characters from the comics in these just different iterations of the characters mm-hmm. um and one of which i don't want to leave this for the spoiler section because i think it's if you've seen into the spider verse if you have any idea of who miles morales is you know about the prowler um this isn't a spoiler I, I think we can leave this out of the spoiler section but the prowler is miles uncle like that's that's been a reveal that's kind of over told and they didn't do it too much in this game they didn't lean into it too much it wasn't the big reveal and i'm curious based off your only reference point being into the spider verse what do you think of the Prowler reveal? It actually surprised me. Why? I forgot. Oh, really? Oh. I li- literally forgot. <laughs> and so, well, they introduce his uncle because you do like a favor for him. And of course, the uncle knows like 
oh, you're Spider-Man pretty much instantly in the game. Um, and it wasn't until like he said something about how his his Miles dad cut ties with his uncle like long ago. And that's when I it like clicked for me. It's like, oh, he's the prowler. And then it, it kind of gets announced in the game. But I thought it was a good addition to the game. I don't know. Well, then yeah. that means that's funny because that means you missed the foreshadow then in the very opening scene when your mom asked you to go find a record to put on to play and you find a prowler file in your dad's old stuff. Yep. So there was a little little foreshadow there in the beginning yeah, of the game. Interesting. Yeah, it's it's not a it was expected for me, in my opinion, from that. So anyways, let, let's leave let's hold story for now and uh let's go into the music in the game. That's the best aspect of the game. I it was so game changing. I remember texting uh Jacob and Nick and I was like, I am Spider Man. <laughs> <laughs> because it it adds a level to the game that I didn't know was missing in the original Spider-Man, the 2018 one. Um, it just, it feels more personal because the one, the soundtrack's amazing, but I realized, unfortunately, they don't like allow you to play that soundtrack every time you're web swinging, which yeah. was a huge missed opportunity because they put all that work in creating such a good soundtrack. Um but then I found out you could play Spotify through the game. Changed everything. I mean, it, there's so many genres of music that change the experience of swinging through and like saving people, fighting crime, all this stuff. Um, I don't know why it was so huge, but it added a huge amount to the game. It felt powerful. Yeah, it well, really did. And yeah. it gave the game more personality, right? Yep. I think... In general, even if you're not listening to Spotify, this game does a really good job of dropping like the needle. Like that's the phrase that you use in film is you drop the needle. It's an actual song that's put into the game. So you have songs from like Jaden Smith and Kid Cudi and Lecrae. Kid yeah. And it's it. this wasn't present in the 2018 version. Like it didn't have a personality to it where... Lil I'm, Wayne is in one, I think. Well, so here, this is the yep. thing, Ryan, is that... Mm -hmm. You sick. also found a playlist. So you're not using the official Miles Morales soundtrack. You're using a playlist that included Into the Spider-Verse songs. It included right. songs that were in the game. So it yeah. kind of like melded these two Miles Morales adjacent things into one. But it did fit really well into this universe. And yeah. Miles Morales is the coolest Spider-Man. Because I mean like he's into making beats and like he's just into music. That was a whole like a huge aspect of Into the Spider-Verse. Peter Parker is not. Peter Parker's like he's nerdy. kind of a, he a probably dweeb. listens to opera like <laughs> yeah. nothing interesting. He likes the strokes. I think he likes the he strokes. He likes the strokes absolutely. Um the, I felt like the music matched it so well and to bring that in with a character like Miles Morales that like already has this history of loving music and making beats um I just it was perfect. Yeah the music was far more involved than the 2018 version. So it was definitely elevated from that. But yeah. again, just to clarify for the listener, Ryan was playing Spotify via the Spotify app on his PlayStation through the game, which you can actually control the volume of the, of the music through it. You can hit next. It's, it's like a really good interface actually on the PlayStation. Yeah. But it does add an element. Now I turned it off cause I took your advice and tried it. But then my problem was, is that you still have the normal music feeding into. You underneath. can turn it off. Did you do that? Yeah. I turned I like the normal that. music off and then just played that playlist. Because you have like the cinematic orchestra score underneath yep. it. And I was yeah. like, oh, this sounds It weird. ruins everything. Yeah. yeah. Music for it you. It ruins everything. Did you do the same play playlist thing or did you stick to the, the game? No, score? I stick to the game. Okay. But I shazammed a lot of the songs that were in there. And that's why I had reached back out about, hey, what playlist are you talking about? Because that makes sense now that it wasn't an official playlist. It was yeah. one that had some of those songs. It was mixed. But yeah. Uh, even the times when you go to cut scenes and he's walking with his headphones on, mm -hmm. it just felt so good. Uh, I don't know. It just felt like, man, this is awesome. I'm vibing right now. And it plays to the end of the Spider-Verse again. These game, this movie is so connected to this game because they were so close in proximity that End of the Spider-Verse also leaned into really good yeah, music as well. Really good music. Like yep. Miles Morales gets good music compared to Peter Parker always. Way better. Yeah. Better vibe, man. And One, I don't good. I was just gonna say, I don't know if we're we're gonna chat about it, but like I feel like the music, the art, clothing, a a, a ton of that just felt culturally relevant. Uh so I don't know if we go into that more, but I think go, yeah. uh, across that whole board of things, when you think about 
the outfit with the hoodie. What do you think about all the artwork that's both in the show and in the game as you're going by people are painting and stuff, spray painting. So I just feel like there's a lot of that cultural creativity that's in Miles Morales that's not in any of the other stuff. It, and it just it, feels really good. It leans into Miles' culture far more because yeah. Peter doesn't really have much, right? Yeah. He's yeah. he's a white guy. He's got Aunt May. He's got Aunt May and that's it. And like Miles is, what is it? He's a Puerto, Puerto Rican and like half puerto rican yeah and yeah. black right yeah. like he's he's half so like they lean into those two cultures a lot in the game which again it gives him more personality yeah. where peter parker just feels so much more boring now so yeah. i love miles boring. mom yeah. i absolutely miles, love yes it. yeah and again we see this perspective from the movie as well like our first exposure of these two pieces mm -hmm. of media and it's created like i've fallen in love with this character way faster than any other superhero character yeah. based off a movie and a video game. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. That hasn't happened before for me. Yeah. So I will say on the topic of music, I'm a huge Kid Cudi fan. And yeah. the intro song in this game is Kid Cudi and Jaden Smith. And it's called On My Own. I recommend just looking it up. But it's perfect timing for Spider-Man basically for the story is leaving the country. He's going on vacation, I think, with Mary Jane. And Miles is in charge of New York City and he's on his own. So the song On My Own with just like that vibe so to it. Good, mm. I love it. It's it's the yeah. it's one of the best intros to a game where I'm just like, yeah, we're like we're in it now. Yeah. So that's music. Anything else on music before we move on to some gameplay mechanics? Mm. No. Gameplay mechanics, one of the biggest things uh in contrast to the 2018 version is the introduction of Venom mechanics. So that's the Venom like uh punch or the Venom blast, whatever it is. Um, it's, it's a mechanic that's not related to the symbiote venom that you're used to in, in the Marvel cinematic universe. I thought it was a weird thing that they named it that. I know. I think it's, I think it's named that in comics as well. So I think they're pulling from the source material, but it's a bad name based it's a off the very fact bad that name. venom There's is already, such a, that's taken. It's taken. Yeah. So for the listener, if you haven't played the game, it has nothing to do with the venom, the black symbiote character. Yeah. But it's more of a bio, what's it, bioelectricity yep. punches and dashes and jumps that give Miles a an elevated sense of combat. Pretty and much static shock mixed with Spider-Man. Yeah. The character static shock yeah. from, uh, what is that, Nickelodeon or Disney? Or Cartoon Network? I thought it was Cartoon Network. Maybe. Nonetheless, the character sure. static shock. Yeah. yeah. It's it's bioelectricity. He, he's able to take on electric charges and also... Um, and like send out, release, it. release right. them yeah. towards enemies. Um, but also that plays into a stealth mechanic in the game where you are also able to go invisible. So let's start with combat, the actual fighting using bioelectricity. Did you like the combat? Did you like this introduction of the venom mechanics? I thought it was huge. It, a whole nother level of um, creativity and how you can beat enemies basically. Because Spider-Man was great, and I feel like they fleshed it out well with gadgets. Mm -hmm. That They leaned really heavy on like gadgets. But I found myself kind of annoyed with having to upgrade all the gadgets and like go through all those menus and then like choose between which ones I wanted to use. When this just felt seamless, like they all had a button command. These, you know, if you hold, I think it was left trigger, um, and then do a regular attack, it actually becomes now a Venom attack. And yeah. so right. it was a really quick transition between like the regular combos and as you build like a bar that is your Venom energy, um, as you fight enemies, that bar goes up. I think it was really, really well done. Mm -hmm. Added a lot to the gameplay. Um, because I felt towards the end of the Spider-Man 2018, which was a longer game. Yeah. Um, I had pretty much defeated enemies in every way a thousand times. And so it was just like getting through the story at that point. And in this game, um, it felt like I was randomly learning, oh, that would be cool to unlock that. Or I could try this. And they almost had to do this, right? Right. Because if you're going to do an extension of the, of the 2018 version, you have to change up one of the biggest features in the game, which is combat. And I think this was the best way to do it, was mm -hmm. adding a whole skill set that elevated the character. And Nick, I'm curious, did you like this this combat mechanic as well? I did. I, I will say this. I was really leery of it at first. I agree with the name. Uh, not really a big fan of the name. Bad name. But uh, so I think if I, if I remember correctly, you fight Rhino at the beginning. That's when they introduce it. And as soon as they like introduce it, I'm like, oh, 
Spider-Man's got electricity now. Cool. And I was kind of like real leery about that. Uh, but I think from a mechanic standpoint, it ended up being really cool and uh, really rewarding, to be honest. Every time you would click into that Venom Punch and actually do it, I felt like I was shredding people, mm -hmm. literally just shredding them. So it was a really enjoyable experience. I think it makes sense. It was a good ad. And uh, when you talk about it like that, having an addition so that the game doesn't feel stale i think that's a really good point right in in these types of games when you have these like beat em up type games um every time every aspect you add that is like an ability of yours is also an ability you can add to the enemy mm -hmm. and so they had a lot of freedom with the enemies in this game because they had certain attributes that could only be affected by certain venom attacks you mm. know like the guys with the riot shields yeah. or the um, rocks on technology later in the game they have a technology that actually stunts your venom so you can't use it if they hit you um or turns off your invisibility turns off your invisibility yeah. so you can't hide if you're in a pinch and so those all those aspects that like introduce something new for you to get used to and at any point can strip it away or require it mm -hmm. um it just creates like these really quick moments of a little bit of frustration when you're learning it but a lot of like sense of achievement when you finish you're like man that was a sick scene i remember like there were so many times where i finished a fight and i was like record like hit record real quick because it was like this perfect sequence of battle i mean it, it's just really fun to do that yeah yeah no i couldn't agree more you talk about stealth and again the venom aspect is adding to stealth in the sense of invisibility and this is new to miles that peter didn't have did you play more stealthy or did you play less stealthy through this given this ability they did everything right compared to P spider spider-man 2018 yeah. peter parker because remember how the, our least favorite part of that game was the stealth missions so bad because you're just like crawling through a vent and there's uh, not really yeah. anything special about what you're doing or you're just up on a rafter and like waiting for the right or you're moment going through cover like rolling through cover and on the ground like it was just not fun yeah it didn't feel it felt forced it didn't feel yeah. like those moments belonged in the game and with miles morales with like his cloaking technology it did like it felt like this is what i'm supposed to do there was there was always this aspect of like when you walk into this room you can take every single person out one by one in a stealthy way or you can just go guns blazing mm -hmm. where it didn't feel that way in 2018. Like you yeah. were a lot more limited in how you did it. That whole structure though, the whole, the game sequence was really rigid. I don't know if you remember, but like if you were spotted by an enemy, then they would have the thing come up and then it was over. Yeah. It would like all no shoot No going you back that, that was stealth. It. Right. I liked that in this game, if you did turn the stealth off or you got caught, then it just turned into a combat scene. So it didn't like hinder you from continuing or saying, you know what, I'm just, I'm not a big fan of the stealth stuff. I'm just going to fight. You're, you're right. The, the Spider-Man 3 was super rigid in that aspect. With, which yeah. there was an addition also when you're doing stealth, they told you if things were safe or not too. Did you notice that when you're, yeah. when you're fighting, like I can sit here and zip down and, and tie up this enemy because it says it's safe, but now it's more clear about communicating. If you attack this enemy, you're going into combat now. Right. Which is important because I think a lot of 2018's issues is that it was very frustrating of like, how did they see me? I didn't know they were going to see me. And now they're communicating that directly, so telling you that this is a safe character yeah. to pick up and zip There's up. a color bar and too. It would go from yellow to red. Mm -hmm. And yeah. there's some forgiveness there because it, in the in 2018 version, it was like, once you're found, you're found and there's no going back. So say there's a room with 30 dudes. That's... It's just not a that's not a fun combat because you're just like dodge, 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 because everyone's just shooting nonstop. So this gave you an opportunity of like, oh, I made a mistake. Mm -hmm. You'll probably take some damage or you'll get on some ground combat, but you can actually go back into stealth. And yeah. so it, there was that forgiveness of like, you don't ruin the whole sequence for yourself of that portion of the level because yeah. it was like like you don't have to take on 30 dudes at one time which just isn't fun yeah you know whether you're good at combat or not it's just a thousand dodges back to back to back and it takes forever to get through all those dudes yeah so in summary we all played stealth more because of the abilities given to miles yes right 
Yeah, hundred percent. I didn't, I wouldn't go out of my way to use it, but I definitely used it a lot more, and yeah. it was much more enjoyable. It was streamlined, right? Yeah. They improved. They for sure, in general, I think they improved on every mechanical aspect that I had issues with in the twenty eighteen version. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which let's go into one of those. Uh, I want to talk about the side missions. Now, there's a couple of new side missions that you can do. Did you do them? Like now, they added in like training areas where you're fighting against like hollow Spider Mans. Um, they also added in what? What is it here? The the prowler prowler music sampling and the time capsule recovery which were really good things for like character development in my mm-hmm. opinion where like with the time capsules he's like oh yeah me and finn did this and this with you know during this time capsule whatever it was or with the the prowler stuff it's like yeah me and your dad were really close we listened we sampled music in this area it was really good character development which wasn't necessarily present in the 2018 Spider-Man, now they have backpacks that did similar things to the time capsule time capsules. But I'm curious, did you go through these? I know you're a side mission boy. Did you do these things in Miles Morales? None. None. Absolutely none. Yeah. Did you were you fatigued from 2018? I think a little bit, and uh, my schedule was a little tight the last couple of weeks. So I knew that uh, I just knew that if I spent a lot of time on the side quest, I wasn't going to be able to finish it. And that's kind of a lame excuse because this game's not very long in it's itself. Uh, but I actually didn't didn't do. I think I may have done like one or two, uh, just swinging over them, but uh, didn't didn't spend a lot of time on the side. Same Ryan or different? I did every uh, sound sampler with the Prowler. And you get that every, suit. I didn't. I'm sorry. I didn't finish it. I'm. I did every one that I passed. Okay. So I don't have all of them. I have most of them. I'm I did them all. done with that. And you do get a really cool Prowler suit out of it. I I was aware I that there the was menu. a Prowler suit and I wanted that. There's a few other suits um, that look incredible uh, that I did not unlock because yeah. I haven't got them all. I did every time cast while I passed too. So I, okay. I almost have all those, but not quite. Now, you didn't do those things. Is there a desire to go back and do these after this review? Do you are you going to hop back into the Miles Morales Spider Man verse, or are you going to go back to 2018? I don't know that there's any way I go back and play 2018. Really? Yeah. yeah. I think this is this is my Spider Man, right? So I'm going to go wow. back and play Miles Morales when I Dang. showcase. Um, again, you know, I have a lot of friends that come over and they want to see the PS5 or like what it can do. When I mm-hmm. showcase it, I open up Miles Morales. And not Spider Man 2018, which okay. is a great game. It's it nothing is. against that. Uh, but Miles Morales is just the, it's just an evolution that I think is necessary and better. Which I am concerned because we're praising the Venom mechanics. And in canon, Peter doesn't get these Venom mechanics. So how do you make a Marvel Spider Man 2 with Peter and it make, and make it feel as good as Miles Morales? I am concerned about that. Yeah. I mean, well, let's just wait until Peter and Doctor Strange hang out for a while see what happens i think you'll play as both i do Ooh. that's a great point yeah, I, i've yeah. heard that theorized that the next game is going to include both of them and maybe they'll even expand. flesh out peter piper's <laughs> <laughs> i love that peter, yeah, piper. peter piper peter parker's ability. <laughs> uh peter parker Dude, just threw in Freudian the cowl slip, he's man. he's now so he so now owns pizza. a franchise yeah. the peter piper. piper franchise yeah, he gained a ton of weight <laughs> he just couldn't swing anymore the webs couldn't support him so he's just he's a lonely pizza man in new york peter piper yeah brooklyn um, side if you're but, looking for him no guys it's worth it's worth bringing up because i think when you talk about the next step in the spider marvel spider-man franchise on on playstation consoles miles morales is that step yeah he's yeah. essential to that step so i think they're gonna have to get creative with peter parker is what i was gonna say is um <laughs> not peter piper yeah he's <laughs> it's what it, papa john <laughs> so he becomes papa john and we all know how that story ended <laughs> if you don't look it up so um, tragic <laughs> yeah. tragic or don't look it up oh. yeah lost his empire anyway um oh maybe he could be a villain in the next game no more I'm no sorry. more no more about papa john <laughs> peter parker he's gonna have to step up his game um the gadgets in 2018 were cool and somewhat useful but i found them more just kind of unnecessary yeah um they weren't needed there was never a point where you're like oh i have to have all these abilities um so i think i think we're going to see a little bit more of robotic peter parker he's got he's got better gadgets better tech um things that you actually need that impact gameplay because like you said they, they have to have something to parallel the venom 
Because otherwise you have like super cool Spider-Man and Spider-Man. You'll have sequences where it's like, oh, I'm playing as Peter Parker now. Yeah, which right. you, I feel bad. You don't want to do that no. as a Spider-Man franchise. What, what about Hulkbuster Spider-Man? I'm down. I'm ready that for it. That would be sick. Which, okay, so we're talking about mechanics and whatnot. And he flies now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we, we do get iterations of the you know tech-based Spider-Man in the Infinity War and sure, all that from stuff. Iron yeah. Man. yeah. So there are developments that we could see yeah. in that regard. But Nick, I want to throw it to you on the topic of mechanics because – Ryan and I both were bothered in 2018. Now we played, we, to clarify the listener, if you didn't know this, we played the 2018 version in 2020 on the PS5. So when we say that, the time of playing this is, is a lot shorter than most people's. When we played the 2018 version, Ryan and I didn't like the puzzles and the stealth and all those different waste of times as, as we uh, categorized it. Did you miss the puzzles in this game? Because they weren't present. Not at all. I actually, at one point got to an area that i thought was going to be a puzzle i think it's those doors that were uh had electricity and then you had to follow the cables and disconnect them Mm -hmm. i got to that first one and was like oh no puzzle which is really weird because and again it's probably just my schedule but i was thinking i don't have time for puzzles like i want to play this i really want to get through this story Uh, i thought the story was just really good so not to go on that but like those are the things that were pulling me into this and less the side quests less the puzzles i really enjoyed the puzzles in the 2018 and this is probably another reason why i'll never go back to that i think i spent like 40 hours on that game doing like all the side quests all the everything and it was fun but like i don't have a desire to go back and do those things I'd rather now swing through the city in cool suits, listening to cool music and a cool story and like feel connected to Miles than do any of that stuff. I just love how many different franchises can sit there and introduce a new version of a character and you prefer that new version. Like yeah. thinking about a new Tony Stark. I can't picture liking a new Tony Makes Stark. I can picture a new Steve Rogers. Yeah. Peter Parker is one of the biggest characters that's a great point well and steve rogers is a good point too it, it's just, yeah because we've actually had that now yeah, too gross. which we're working towards that but like captain th- lithuania <laughs> <laughs> i mean there's like russian whatever the red red guardian but i do think that one. it's such a, a testament for the power of miles morales as a character that we sit here and go peter peter parker who like i want to play as miles morales moving forward yeah so i don't know with that point do you want to go into story spoilers? Yeah, Let's I'd do love it. to, man. Let's dive in. I'd love to. So for the listener... I didn't finish it, but... You're full of it. <laughs> I know you did. You finished it first. For the listener, um, <laughs> I'll put timestamps in. If you haven't beaten this game or you don't want spoilers for Spider-Man Miles Morales, just go down to the description, whether you're on podcast platforms or YouTube, I'll put a timestamp to skip ahead. But right now, this is the spoiler section for this episode. Um, guys, what'd you think about the big Finn reveal? So for the, for the listener, if you didn't know, I'm sure you do. The Tinkerer is a character from Spider-Man comics. I don't know if you know this. He's also in, um, Spider-Man homecoming. That's one of the characters that the vulture is working with. That's the Tinkerer. So this is kind of like a lamest name. It's it's, it's a lame name. Yeah. You have a new (laughs) version of this character through Finn, which is Miles's like childhood best friend. And you see him like kind of finding out, they both find out like, oh, you're Spider-Man and you're the tinkerer. And it's it's like this, this really hard realization that you're working through, that you're working against each other, right? They're at conflict with what they're doing. I'm curious, did that reveal hit for you in contrast to even like something like the Prowler? Hmm. Yeah, I, I felt like it was a, I felt like it was a pretty good twist. Not like it, she was shocking to me. It didn't really surprise me, I guess I should say. Yeah. I kind of got this sense that everything wasn't right with Finn, like you normally do before Mm -hmm. a big reveal. Um, It it had that. They give a few. They give another foreshadow too. Yeah, they give some of that. They they didn't really try to hide it. You know, they kind of like showed that she was hiding something, Mm -hmm. and so you just kind of connect the dots there. Why I think it was a good story was because you got to explore like the heartbreak of mm. miles morales yes. and his childhood best friend and so um well both of them i yeah i felt like it was believable that she would get this desperate at the loss of her brother so basically rocks on this evil corporation um 
her brother was an engineer for them. He developed this incredible new technology for energy harnessing. Uh, turns out it was just super dangerous. Mm -hmm. And so after he invents it, he goes, no, no, wait, we can't use this. We could kill a lot of people. It makes people sick. Um, so he tries to undo it, but Roxxon stops them because they now have this new technology that's going to make them billions and billions of dollars. So she was there to help her brother stop Roxxon by basically hacking into their system and deleting all the files because Roxxon didn't know how to make it without him. Mm -hmm. They killed her brother and basically disposed of her. She survived, but... Um, it was like this really tragic moment where she knew she was right. Like her and her brother were saving the world and her brother was her hero. He was basically like her dad, I think. Um, and so like watching this unfold where the ultimate evil to her became rocks on and she knew my brother can't rest until like his memory will not be will not have justice done to it if I can't stop Roxxon mm -hmm. from destroying the world. And um, so she threw everything she had at it and it, it ended up leading into her being a villain. It, being a villain, like it's... Uh, video games have, as of recently, done a really good job of telling mm. how people are pushed to extremism. Yeah. Like how they become the villain. Yeah. It, it, it makes it like... I don't want to say relatable, but like understandable. Yeah, they of, take you through a path of here's exactly the little baby steps of like, okay, first we're just attacking the company, and then we're act attacking a public center, and then we're actually attacking innocent people. Right, and it shows you how this thought process of man, people are driven to unspeakable acts because of their tragedy in their personal life, and I think that speaks to like the greater climate at times. Yeah, where you can empathize with a video game character. Because it does show you that journey. And Finn is a perfect example. And then you have Miles on the other side of it being that contrast of, hey, 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 like I understand what you're going through. This is not the way to go about it. Yeah, so, but I think Miles actually made this one worse. And to me, this was at the core of some of the story was that like she felt even worse once she had discovered that Spider-Man was Miles. Mm. So not only was mm. he dishonest and not telling her, but her childhood best friend is now working against her and everything that she's trying to do to recover from the family. So yeah. there's like this double whammy there of like, um, you know, like I have this really, this really tragic thing that happened and it's taken me over emotionally and I'm going to fix it. I'm going to correct this, this wrong and I'm going to find justice. And my, my best friend is against it and he's trying to stop me against it. But also I think the resolution, let's get into the resolution of the story is that she does see it by the end and she does do a sacrificial maneuver, right? She, she dies in the end. She sacrifices herself to save the, the well, neighborhood. She died? We, I assume she dies. You never know. She we don't like know. blows up into a million pieces, but I wasn't fully clear. <laughs> Honestly, maybe she survived. You that. don't know what these types of games right. really. Yeah. But I do think that there is a lot of symbolism to the fact of she does come around to it. Miles is the teacher in this process of, Hey, there's a way we can go about this together. That's the right way to go about yeah. it. And I think it's beautiful. He's like the ultimate good, the ultimate good. Um, and again, that's, I think where Peter Parker resonates as well. Like mm -hmm. they're very much sp like the Spider-Man character is the uh, lawful good always like he, he doesn't really go in this gray area he's always um, operating in the the best space possible and it usually pans out well for him yeah uh, beyond his best friend or one of his best friends dying in this game hmm. that was it, dark jacob it that was, was dark that's really dark <laughs> but I, so here let's, let's talk about the emotional aspect i want to know what mm. what brought you to the emotional side of this what scene was that so mine was, uh, and I think that maybe there's more to this. Maybe you guys add flavor. But Miles coming home, spoiler, or still spoiler, Miles coming home with his mask off. Yes. Um, and real, uh, yeah, so never mind. I don't want to jump off track. Miles coming home with his mask off, and the mom comes out, sees him, and it's like, oh my gosh. So I think there's this one aspect that's subconscious that maybe you guys will touch at that's like, sometimes you just want people to know who the, the actual superhero is and like you never get that you just never get that that never happens in, in movies like they never reveal themselves so i like, am iron man this first movie so they well, they, they ruined do, your argument so. yeah <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so, forget three words. so forget everything i just said the spider-man character in general has always been in secrecy yeah right 
And so anyways, then you sit down and she's like upset and you guys are kind of talking back and forth and having this conversation. And essentially in the back, she's, she's like, why didn't you trust me? And he's like, I didn't want to worry you. In the background's a picture of the dad on the fireplace who's dead. And she says, mijo, there's nothing you could ever do that would make me not trust you or not love you. And it was just like this really... And I think maybe some of uh, the Puerto Rican or even Hispanic cultures in there of like, uh, she uses their their first language, mijo. Like, there was like this really sentimental, I absolutely love you. You need to listen to me. Nothing matters on the outside. Like, nothing you could ever do would change that. Mm -hmm. And the dad's in the background in a picture. And it was just like this moment that was like really powerful. And that's when Afton came in with a tray of brownies and was like, I'm just going to leave. I'll yeah. leave you to this. These things are laced. You should not eat these right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This will make the whole experience worse. That was the one for me. I'm glad you brought that because like that hit for me, but there was a bigger one that hit me for it. And again, like the culture aspect cannot be underplayed in this game. Like, it, it, you know, we're talking about, you know, three white guys talking about this. I'm somewhat Hispanic here. I say somewhat because it's not clear. You're half Mexican. I'm half Mexican. People assume I'm white, but one of the biggest aspects was that at the end of the game, a character says, you know, it's the reveal. He's wearing his, his mask is off. It's like burned off or whatever. He doesn't access. He's like, he's just laying vulnerable. And one of the NPCs, like, I don't know who it was, but he just goes, they're all protecting his identity. They're not going to tell the press. They're like, forming a barrier so you can put his yes. mask back on Dude, and goosebumps, one, man. I, I have the chills right now yeah. one of the characters says that guy he's our spider-man and like i don't know it's like it's like weird it resonates to me in the he's not your traditional spider-man he's our spider-man yeah like he's the hispanic black high spider-man and i don't know i, I don't know why that like yeah, but that's also that's a really good part that's also from the beginning of the game there's multiple times in the game uh there's two of them that i'm thinking of where you're walking by and they're they're painting the spider-man mural and miles says hey are you thinking about painting that other one yes, and he's yes. like no nah, that's maybe that's the new spider that's a different spider-man that's not spider-man and then yeah. when you go to the store that's been robbed and you're trying to bring it back in there's another comment there about like you're not spider-man you're you're something else mm-hmm. you know what i mean like you're you're just whatever uh and then he's like well thanks thanks for saving me and at the end they bring that together and they're like we are wrong no that's our that's that's the spider-man of harlem that's yeah, our spider-man yeah. and yeah. It, it made it made that really powerful you're right and i think okay so spider-man in general is the most relatable hero right mm-hmm. like iron man billionaire weapons expert <laughs> captain america genetically altered super soldier hulk I really I mean scientist turns green yeah. and is They're a not uber scientist. Not approachable. Russian, Jacob relates to Bannon. Russian secret <laughs> right. agent that's gone rogue, Black Widow, right? Like none of them are relatable in, in any aspect. But even like the original Peter Parker, it's like this brilliant young scientist. I mean, he just like, you know, in 2018, he's doing all this like robotic stuff that is way ahead of his age you know like he's working with an expert in that dr Oc, you know octavius dr octavius it's like even he felt kind of unrelatable even as a white guy i was just like i'm not like that at all right like (laughs) (laughs) i still make poop jokes you know it's like (laughs) it's just not it's not the same and so you have this character although miles morales is brilliant and in his own way like a really good student Dude, he's like in the city mm-hmm. and he's he's just like the rest of us. He's just yeah. like everyone else, you know, and has just been imbued with this incredible power and he's doing what he can with it. The best he can. Yeah. And that's inspirational to me. You know, he wasn't born into this like billionaire family like Iron Man. And of course, he's going to do incredible stuff. You know, he's never not had a billion dollars to his name. And so... Uh, I, yeah, I, I resonated with that a lot when the, the city defends him because they're like, this is our guy. He's it, he's ours. It's yeah. reminiscent of, I think, Spider-Man 2 with, with Tobey Maguire where the city is like, it's such a cheesy it's scene. It's so cheesy. It's so cheesy, yeah. but it, it does give me the same wow. emotions that I felt as a kid where they're like, you know, crowd surfing him, him up, across. Yeah. But it's just like this sense or of- Or like Joker at the end of the Joker with uh, Joaquin Phoenix when he's like bleeding out on the taxi and like the- 
cities rioting and there's fires being started they're like he's our hero it's just I'm kidding it's not like that yeah sure but like the sentiment <laughs> i was i was like not following fully but i was like sure ryan um i do think that there's just such significance to the fact of like the phrase he is he's our spider-man like he's ours yeah and like the the you see the journey of oh yeah he's the other spider-man but now it's like no 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 and like as as we're talking right now we're going I mean, Miles Morales is the better Spider-Man. Like that's that's kind of the consensus that we're having here. Yeah, and I think that's so cool um, for many reasons, be it cultural, be it age, be it educational background. Like I, th- I think it's just a big step for a character that means so much to so many people. Um, and this game does it so well. Yeah, like so well. So <sighs> I don't know anything on story aspects, spoilers before we move on to scoring this. No, I just think uh, I would just add in there. I was thinking about it earlier that I think like the rocks on, you know, this total, I just heard this in a podcast. It, it's so, there's a million stories out there, literally tens of thousands of stories about the evil corporation, right? Like that's just a thing. Like it's such an easy story because the whole genre. Yeah. Really. I mean, companies chase uh, a lot of times profits over people. And so we just see this and it's like really believable, but I feel like Simon Krieger was a much better actor. And maybe this is just a few years time, but like, than what's his face, who is the guy in charge of the, uh, the clan who was like working at the community center the whole time oh, oh mr white balance mr negative <laughs> yeah, okay yeah i don't i don't know i just felt like there was that time when you're you're locked up and he's he's questioning both you and finn and um he's just like you know what i gotta go it's time to go to the gym leg day can't miss my leg day like he was just like such a perfect rich a-hole yeah like i feel i just so i felt like I don't know. I feel like he did a really good job being that guy yeah. in the story. And uh, um, I don't know. It was just, a, I thought it was a really good story. Better than 2018 yeah, in I your mean, opinions? Okay. Nothing I'm going to yep. lose sleep over, but like, I thought it was a really enjoyable experience. Yeah. yeah dude. I, and I think, you know, I think we can all say unanimously that gameplay mechanics and story both were improvements for Miles Morales and compared to 2018. Yeah. 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 All right, with that note, yeah. let's go into scoring this. So for a reference yeah. point, our score was 8.5 for the 2018 version. That's accurate. Yeah, you, you, I, I stand by that as well. I think yeah. it's, a good, it's a great game. Impressive by our metric. Um, but Nick, let's start with you. Where do you fall on Why? Why? Spider-Man Miles Morales 2020? I feel like Ryan should go first. No, I, I chose you specifically. Yes. Yes. Yeah. As a pod daddy, I, I choose these things. Yeah, he gets to call, make that call. I don't know. I, I'm I'm kind of torn between two scores. So um the tale of two scores. Nice. Thank you. It's it's really tough for me. Give, give me the two scores then. It's fine. We don't have to give you you don't Yeah, have to I was gonna you. say an eight point five or a nine. So you would have you would have put it alongside the original. Yeah, the I mean score. but yeah, but going in I don't think that I was really comparing it as much. And so I think comparing it now, obviously, if you listen to both of them, this just sounds a lot better. But I think the other Spider-Man still had a lot of things at that time as the first one I ever played that satisfied my needs a lot more. And then this one satisfied it a lot more in the fact that I needed a a smaller story now and more of the emotional aspect than some of the other things. So I think that it was really tough for me comparative. I I think this one was better, but... um, not i don't know i just think that yeah you know you know i'm going with that let's let's pump the brakes actually on score real quick i want to speak to something you just brought up the length of the story it's about a 10 to 13 hour story i would say depending on how much you do side quest wise yeah how do you feel about the story do you prefer prefer a story like this compared to 2018 which is more like 20 plus hours or is this your ideal sweet spot for a spider-man story Uh, ryan i'll throw it to you since you just talked about a little bit going forward i think I would love for Insomniac to make shorter games like this. Really? Yeah. Um, maybe if it's like a different, whole different IP, but going forward with Spider-Man, I would love these like short episodes, you know, with like little improvements as we go. I don't yeah. know that we need like Spider-Man 2, this full-fledged. I don't really know where else I could take it okay. than just like interesting little stories. Uh so that's that's my opinion, you know. I, I fall on that as well as I think with games in general, I don't have as much patience patience as I used to for 
20 to 30 hour in-depth puzzles and blo- yeah exactly because like stealth when and- you look at the 2018 version it was bloated with a lot of side content that was Very. not necessary yeah. yeah so you bring that up and i want to bring that up in our in our scoring system because a lot of what we critiqued 2018 for with an 8.5 was that it was bloated and i think that's gone here yeah so between less bloat gameplay mechanics and um story i I'd think give it a nine you give it a nine. And Ryan, I want to throw it I would give this a nine and a half. Wow. Ooh. Okay. I thought a it was a nine awesome. decimal five. Also, it's like winter, Christmas, Christmas time. We got me into the holiday spirit. I mean, Ooh, I am ready. ready for Christmas at this point. Yeah. Bring it on. It's September, but I don't care. Yeah. September yeah. is literally Christmas music. Should start Should start now. Yeah. Oh, it's, that may be too much. I'm a big Christmas guy, but I can burn out on Christmas. Anyways, I was between nine and nine and a half, but breaking down. That they they addressed all the problems we had, like you said, with 2018 Spider. Yeah, they really did. I have no, I have, guys, I have no heartburn about a nine point five. <laughs> there it is. We haven't heard of no heartburn in a while. It's been a long time. It's been a long time. Welcome back, Nick. Um, so <laughs> when I've been heartburn on the internet, and actually, gaming podcast comes up. <laughs> yeah, coming into this episode, I was coming in between a nine and nine point five. I think with speaking to you, with speaking to the emotional impact that this game had on me, again, when you talk about, um, you know, emotion brought out tears, whatever it is in a game, it's a rare occurrence for me. And that has to be pointed out and praised because if if a game can deliver that message in a a story, that's significant. Um, Yeah, I, I indubitably, I concur. So I fall on a 9.5 with this. I'm going to settle on a 9.5. Um, given our conversation, given where you're at, I think we can agree as Bushley Gaming, as the collective, the three of us, it's, that's a 9.5 on our scale. Yeah, Bush Collective, for sure. All right, 9.5, Miles Morales, Bush Collective. <laughs> Impressive. Anything before we go into some housekeeping? Housekeeping. Oh, oh my goodness. This has never happened when you were present. What did you right? just say to me? Housekeeping. How do you counter that? <laughs> <laughs> Ryan attempted throwing his glass at him. Nick is knocked out. You want me to do it now? I kind of do it. Can yeah, I do that's, it? That's the real. Housekeeping. See, it sounds better. No, it didn't. Get in your know. lane. I anyways. think I threw him off a little bit. Upcoming episodes. We have a review of The Ascent coming up. 12 minutes. Road 96. 96. I keep doing you it. Do Road 96. Time. It's because Psychonauts 2 comes up for some reason. I know ah. those two things don't work together. Um, if there's any game out there you want us to review, let us know. I am no Bush JRPGs. League. I'll play. I'll play a JRPG. Nick will play a JRPG. Mm. I am Bush League GMG on Twitter. Nick is at Nick A Beard, and Ryan is at Bush League Ryan on Twitter. Email is Bush League Games at gmail.com. Dude, Bush League Games at gmail.com is getting spammed with just garbage right now. Nice. I don't want to plant any seeds for listeners out there, but I'm getting so much clickbait and so much spam that's not being filtered out. Like superhuman my- man. My email is like pure alt right right now on Bush League Games. Oh, really? It's like it, everything conspiracy sent me. Wow, what is your Bush League search games. history then? I don't think it's based off <laughs> me. I think someone's sitting here. The problem someone is signed us up from some sketchy. We newsletter. started listing Bush League Games at gmail.com on Twitter, like uh, very clearly now. And I think there's just like auto spam that just bots. bots that just collect those emails. But, anyways, if you're a real person, I still check it. Please email us. It, if you want an intro and they're throwing in, if you want any questions, let us know. We're open to it all. Um, support us, patreon.com slash bushly gaming, or our merch store is bushleygaming.com slash store. Subscribe on YouTube. We don't have a specific URL yet, but just you know, click in the link of this description or go to YouTube, search Bushly Gaming, hit subscribe. We appreciate it. And uh yeah, that's it. Today this this was a fun episode. I think Miles Morales is a must play for PS5, PS4 owners, really, too. Yeah. And uh I'm looking forward to the future of this franchise to see where it goes. Indubitably. See, I just stole Nick's line. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Guys, thanks for this episode, and we'll see you next week. Love you guys. I love you. See ya. (laughs) 